everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we'll talk COBOL. On MVS 3.8 as delivered by the TK4 distribution, we use uh, this COBOL compiler here that you see a very ancient um, uh, manual from, from uh, April 1972. And uh, IBM delivered then on the, on the S370 and S360, they delivered a COBOL compiler called IBM OS Full American National Standard or NC COBOL compiler. And this is just one of the several manuals that came with it. This is just a planning guide. And uh, let's look here at when this was released. First edition, April 1972. And uh, that's a COBOL compiler that we can use on MVS 3.8 because it's, uh, it's a COBOL compiler that IBM had to release into the public domain as part of the settlement with the Justice Department in an antitrust uh, lawsuit of back then. And so we can legally use this in MVS 3.8. It's a good compiler, it does its job, and uh, but it has its shortcomings too because it's so old. Now if you look at the COBOL compilers through the history, uh, IBM starts to list here on the website this COBOL compiler from 1974. However, it does not list this COBOL compiler from uh, 1972 because uh, these are the COBOL compilers after the settlement with the uh, with the Justice Department. So they kind of abandoned this, uh, this COBOL compiler and they don't list it. Uh, however, this is the only one we can use on, uh, on MVS uh, uh, 3.8. And then IBM later on released all these other COBOL compilers going from 1974 um, to today. And of course, they still release COBOL compilers to this very day, 64-bit obviously today. Back then it was 24-bit. Now over the last few years has been a massive revival of retro computing interest in the IT enthusiasts and hobbyist uh, communities around the world, uh, ranging from, of course, from the Ataris and the Mikas and Commodore 64s, all the way to uh, mini computers such as DEC, uh, PDP-11s, VAXs, and mainframes. So thousands uh, of people, or maybe hundreds of thousands of people now use older computers and older operating systems and there's also because of that there's been a massive interest of course on mvs and and you can't really say mvs without saying COBOL. and there's just so much more attention to uh these topics now that uh, there's been more and more tapes have been found uh, tape reels with older and older software that we thought was lost forever and uh, especially for this video, what I want to refer to is to these two compilers here. Um, this one, OSVS COBOL 1.4, um, and uh, this one, OSVS OVS COBOL 2 1.4, this compiler here. Now, we I received tape reels with backups of these uh, COBOL compilers from real installations way back then, and I've actually managed to get those transferred over to um, to electronic format and then uh, install them on my MVS system here at home. So what I want to do in this video is just look at the differences between these two compilers and play with them a little bit and see what they're what they're capable of doing. And uh, that's what we're going to do today here on this video and that's why we're going to switch now to the terminal. So what you see here is my 3270 terminal connected to my MVS instance and we'll log in here in a second. Here I have a folder open on my Windows desktop where I receive prints thanks to the amazing uh, uh, Herc print facility of which I've talked at length in this channel which will obtain the mainframe printouts, the listings over, uh, over a socket, over a TCPIP socket and format it with my a 1403 font that I bought um, from a font provider and then uh, and then make it available as PDFs here so that we can open them and look into them. So why don't we log in and see what kind of compilers we got here. So I'm logging in as Herc01 and this is just the normal um, MVS TK4 minus update 8. We're still waiting for update nine. I think we will have to see for 
we have to see when certain Hercules bugs are going to be fixed for TK4 Update 9 to be released. I just installed the very latest Hercules uh, version yesterday, uh, right now is towards the end of September, and it still has a bug that I reported for the first time about three years ago that prevents it from running smoothly on one CPU machines. It runs better on two CPU machines, but it has some kind of weird loop on one CP, one CPU machine. So that, and I'm sure there's other bugs that uh, Jurgen, the maintainer of the TK4 distribution is waiting to be fixed before releasing update nine. But in the meantime, lots of good things are flowing in the new update, such as a much better Rex um, um, interpreter and many other goodies so it's not it's not it's you know it's good for us to wait for update 9 because in the meantime many things are being contributed so let's go here and see what we get you all when you install the virgin um, mvs tk4 you get um, a compiler a global compiler that you can play with if you run if you go to uh sys2.jclib you'll go down here and you see there is a couple of examples that are delivered with TK4 update uh, 8 standard. So let's take this one. And as you can see here, there is here a whole job, including the COBOL source code that computes prime numbers. And, um, and so you wouldn't think of COBOL as the best example to compute uh, prime numbers, but of course it's possible and i'm using this here to compute the first 30,000 prime num uh, not prime numbers up to the first 30,000 natural numbers and um, i'm uh, putting this on message class a so that we can receive it here and uh, why don't we run this and look what what we got here so let's submit this and these are the uh, parameters we're passing to the COBOL compiler we want to get um, a listing of uh, an assembly listing to see what's going on there and some of the other parameters. So let's run it and we should re be receiving here shortly a printout. And here it is already. So let's open this and let's see what we got. So this is, of course, the Jest 2 log that tells us what uh, went on tells us when it started, when it ended, all within the same um, cardinal second, but we'll, we can get better measurement along this old took. This is the compilation step, which took um, nine hundredths of a second. And this is the go step, which took, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the go step, took uh, four hundredths of a second. And so here now we're looking at the COBOL compiler uh, where it tells us that this is uh, COBOL version 2 level 78 as of 1st of May 1972. So this is the COBOL compiler that we're using here. And this is from, uh, was built by IBM on 1st of May 1972 and still works fine. It's even um, year 2k uh, compatible so it knows it's 2021 and then it does its job and um, and then prints the prime numbers up to um, 30,000 so 3,245 prime numbers found in four hundredths of a second so that's what we have and you will see some things which changed in the syntax of COBOL in later versions. As you know, COBOL uh, is controlled by the CODASIL um, committee. Uh, CODASIL is known mainly for being the standards committee around COBOL and for databases. Uh, when you talk about databases, CODASIL is still an important organization. So uh, now that I looked at it here, uh, we can put this aside and uh, see uh, what we got here. So first of all, this COBOL compiler, as I said, doesn't know about vSAM. Does have, it does have an optimizer, but of course, it's a very um, basic optimizer from the mid-60s. So this compiler was designed in the mid-60s and the last version of it was released, as we saw in uh, May 1972. 
Now, as I said, I received some tapes with other COBOL compilers and I installed them here uh, just for the sake of uh, history and for the sake of showing here what the differences were. I installed it here on um, on this uh, on the system. Now let's look here what we got, and we have we are looking well. Maybe let's do it like this. So this is Cobol VS1 version 2.4. So let's go look here where it is. This is the compiler we're looking at here right now. Um, from released first in 1976 all the way to the late uh, 1999 and I guess this is because it, it's not supposed to be um, year 2000 compliant but we see in a second that actually was um, IBM maybe just didn't want to give a guarantee and um, we use the exact same program to run here now if I use the exact same program you will see that there's some slight differences here we use double quotes for strings and if you go to the one we used before, which uses the old MVT compiler, strings are actually defined with a single quote. So that's, um, if I put it here like this, and we can run an example, you'll see that actually will complain about the syntax. So let's go back. Mm, there it is. If I run this and let the output come out here and we put here single quotes, this is the same string. And we run this. And now let's first check, check what kind of uh, parameters we pass it. Same parameters like before. But and also, but now we say optimize for time. Time means two means optimize for runtime, and one means optimize for compilation time. So we want, of course, optimize for runtime, and we search for the first uh, thirty thousand uh, for prime numbers in the first thirty thousand numbers as well. Same thing. So let's run this. Here it is. Yeah, so here now we have the full output. And we see here now, this is the compiler, 5740CB1. So let's go check against this 5740CB1, as you can see here. And we have release 2.4. So that's exactly this compiler. released first 1976 up to the very last day of 1999 uh, for sure because of uh, Y2K compliance. So here's the compiler um, that of course is not freely available. I'm just running it here to, uh, to test it and it produces a very nice assembler listing where you can follow exactly what it does and also you can see how it optimizes things if you go and follow. And, you, and it also refers to the statement number when it produces the output. So that's actually very interesting to follow. And I sometimes uh, on flights um, take this listings and look at the assembler listing and uh, compare it with the original source code in COBOL. And so I can see what the, um, what the optimizer did. Um, so, okay, so here printed all the numbers and now let's check the runtime, how long it took to produce all these numbers. Let's look what JS2 tells us. So the compilation took um, uh, a tenth of a second, which is slightly longer than actually the MVT compiler that we ran before, because if you remember that was nine, uh, nine um, tenths of a second. Let's look for comparison. So here it took, 
actually, yeah, it took slightly less than a tenth of a second, as I just mentioned, and here it took a tenth of a second. But the go step here took um, two hundredths of a second, whereas here the F compiler, which has not as great as an optimizer here, took double the time. As you can see here, so a much uh, more up-to-date compiler, uh, about 10 years uh, uh, newer compiler than the this, the old compiler and this the F compiler did it in uh, four hundredths of a second and this did it in about half the time so of which only half was CPU time and let's see here how much was CPU time yeah three hundredths of a second so uh, significantly faster and that's because the optimizer is so, so much more advanced and so um, that's what we what we're looking at here right now is the compiler from uh, from released first in 1976, this one. Now I also obtained a copy of this compiler here, which was released first in 1993. So um, significantly newer compiler, almost uh, almost uh, 20 years uh, newer than this one that we just looked at now. And let's go run it and see what comes out. So. I have this new compiler installed here as well. And of course, you can have all these compilers installed on the same system. Uh, that's why I work with Steplib. Steplib tells you which libraries to use in this step. You can also have Joblib. And again, I do an optimize too, and I print the uh, data section map and the uh, procedure map. And uh, and then let's go run this for the same amount up to the first 30,000. And again, this is the OSVS2 global compiler released in 1993. So let's run it here. And let's call it C. And keep an eye here for the listing to arrive and here it is of course it only takes a blink of an eye for my uh, 2017 Intel NUC to uh, calculate those numbers even with the emulator so here we have the result so this took even longer to compile than, than before so before if we look at the top numbers you see that this took a tenth of a second. This is slightly more, 20% uh, more time. And this one was slightly below. So this is the, let's remove these tabs. This is the F compiler, which uh, which was the fastest from 19, the MVT compiler from the 60s. Then we have this one took 10 and this is the one released in 1976, and this compiler released in 1993 um, is, is the slowest compiler. But now let's look at the Go step, where the execution was. And this is also just like the compiler from before, two hundredths of a second, like this one. If we go to the Go step, also two hundredths of a second, one hundredths of a second of pure CPU time, just like this one. Uh, and this, of course, was in the Go the slowest because the optimizer was not as advanced. This was double the time and most of it on CPU. So significantly best, better execution with the newer compilers. Um, so as you can see here, the procedure map and um, data maps don't exist anymore. Um, so did we optimize at all? So we actually didn't even optimize. Um, and so we can now go and find out in the in the manual for it how we turn the optimizer on. So th it actually, so the la the latest compiler here, that's interesting. This one, without even turning on the optimizer, was the same speed as this compiler here with the optimizer. So we need to go find the manual for it um, on Bit Savers. Maybe we even have 
have to manual zero note. Okay. This is the, well, this is 5740 CB1. 5740, yeah, this is the, the manual for this compiler, but we want the manual for this compiler. So, I don't know. No, we can't, we can't find it. So let's go try to fix it ourselves. Optimize. Maybe if we say time. And then remove the ones that are not supported anymore. Now, one more advantage of this latest compiler is that it has structure programming, if then else uh, kind of structures, which the older compiler, such as the one here, didn't have yet. So let's see what this one came back with. If it accepted our invalid optimized time. Uh, maybe we just say optimize. Maybe uh, in the mindset of the 90s, optimizing for compile time was not an issue anymore and they removed that. So let's remove parameter within optimize and let's see if this runs fine now so that's a good thing about having the listings delivered to your desktop it's so much easier to just open them up and okay here's the latest version let's go see if it accepted our parameters yes it did so now it optimized as you can see here uh, optimize is now turned on. So let's go look at the runtime now. So compilation with optimize, still like before, slightly 20% slower than the one from the mid, mid 70s. And the go step was still uh, two hundredths of a second with one hundredths of a second on the CPU. Um, but that's okay. So it optimized here and um, it produced the prime numbers up to 30,000. Uh, of course, we have the data division map. So you can see where your variables were being used. We have the same thing in assembly listings in PL1, compiler listings, the literal pool. And you can see here, this is from, this particular release was last built on 15th of September, 1992. So this would be 29 years ago, almost exactly to the day. And uh, the assembler output here. And now we can go and reintroduce that syntax error, deliberate syntax error that I was referring to before. Let's go do that here. So remember that I said that single quotes were not part of the COBOL syntax anymore at that time by that time. So if we run it, let's see what it comes back with. Where's the single quotes? Here. So it should complain now somewhere. Here it is. So here are the it's an it's an error. A quote or an apostrophe was used as a character string delimiter. It was not the delimiter option in effect. So you can actually set for backwards compatibility. You could set the delimiter option in the in the parameters. But uh, so but because we have the syntax error according to the official uh, COBOL syntax of nine, of the mid nineties, it gave us a return code of eight and it still executed it. Of course, in the JCL, we could check for 
um, turn codes greater than four or so and then prevent the code from running but it does tell us that this is not the official syntax so we fix it here and there's also one more difference to the very early COBOL compilers from the mid 60s that we use as pre-installed in MBS uh, 3.8 in TK4 and that is the where um, data definitions have to be so um, this is called the area A of COBOL as you know COBOL is position oriented language such as Python and uh, uh, the variables of level 77 need to be here and then the other, other ones should be here but if you go and look at the output from the MVT compiler this one so this is the one that, that's pre-installed we look at how data is written here so the 0, 1 variables are on the same level like 77 in, the, in area A but it shouldn't be in area A and if we did it exactly if we took over the code exactly like that it wouldn't compile with uh, with the later compilers because that would be wrong syntax by today's standards and uh, so I also have videos where I compile the exact same program also with uh, the very latest compilers of ZOS 2.4 with this kind of compiler here and it still compiles the exact same program it compiles exactly the same with this fixes here the same fixes that I have and by remove by changing single quotes double quotes for strings for string uh, literals but uh, it's amazing that you can take a program from the mid 60s and compile it so uh, as you can see here it's um, it's quite amazing to have all these compilers in the in the same MVS 3.8 and they all work fine and in one of the future videos what I'll do is I'll actually test um, newer PL1 compilers of which we also found quite a few in uh, in all tape reels that have been sent to me so um, so all this works just fine you can we have now right now in this MVS three COBOL compiled generations coexisting on the same on the same MBS so we have the one even before the very first that's listed here by IBM what's called the MVT COBOL compiler that's freely available and then we have this one here uh, which we installed from old uh, tape reels and then we have this one and all three of these compilers exist together and as we've seen um, no performance gain really from this COBOL compiler from the mid 70s to this one from the uh, 90s but uh, both of these have a significant uh, gain in, uh, in execution time compared to the MVT COBOL compiler because of the optimizer that's built in. And today, um, quite a few people are convinced that the latest COBOL compilers are actually able to optimize code, COBOL code into assembler better than any assembler programmer could write from scratch. Some assembler programmers would uh, disagree with that, but um, obviously, uh, it's for sure more maintainable if you write the, the code in COBOL and then have it and then have very good optimization versus writing it in assembler so for sure these are very high quality COBOL compilers that IBM is offering today but even this one from the 90s is a, is a superb COBOL compiler that would still work just fine today and in fact this was only removed from circulation I think yeah in early 2001 so until 20 years ago, this was still a viable COBOL compiler in 24-bit, mind you. So all these compilers here are all 24-bit, right? Uh, the very first 31-bit compilers came around here. So, um, so significant stuff. And um, now I'm not a COBOL expert. Um, I've never really been a professional COBOL programmer. I wrote very, very few COBOL programs um, back in the days but I wrote quite a few lines of code in PL1 of course uh, but still fascinated by uh, by COBOL because it's so close to assembler as I pointed out in the previous video um, a couple of months ago uh, if you look at this this is actually 
English for assembler. I mean, you could relate every line here, almost line for line, into assembler. And I've shown this with my payroll reports, both in assembler and in COBOL, where the number of statements comes out to almost exactly the same, whether assembler or in COBOL. So it's it is a high level language, but it also it's also quite close to the uh, to the machine. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show today. And uh, if you have any questions about um, COBOL, then please uh, contact me. I'm, as I said, not a COBOL expert, but there's quite a few COBOL experts on uh, in this channel. And also you could, of course, join us on Discord. And I will link to our Discord uh, channel, chat channel in the description below this video so that uh, you can go there and mingle with other mainframe enthusiasts and experts of uh, where we have quite a few COBOL and uh, experts there as well. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.